Hey guys, welcome back. I am currently recording this video on the first day of your lecture, so I hope you guys had a good first lecture and uh, back to school. And so this one is going to be mainly about practicing what you guys learned in the first two videos with formal charge and curved arrows. And it's going to be just a lot more practice about drawing mechanisms and predicting the products given the arrows and stuff. Uh, and so if at any point in time you guys want to pause the videos and try them before you see me do them, feel free to do that. You can always do that or you could watch me and then do the practice on the review problem set. So let's get started. So for the first example, I ask you guys to draw a mechanism and to make it a little easy in the beginning, I have labeled the hydrogen. As you can see, we label the hydrogen purple over here and we label the purple over here. So you kind of know where, it, uh, where the hydrogen is going. So let's look at what we have first. On this side, we have a hydroxide anion, which acts as a base, right? As oxygen has a negative charge. And over here, we have H2SO4. Now, if you guys remember from Gen Chem, this is sulfuric acid, and it's a pretty strong acid, right? It's very, it's very readily donating a proton. And so we're, if we remember back from the first video about acid-base reactions, we know that a base is going to grab a proton, and the acid is going to give it. So if we see, look at this, we see that the hydroxide has a white H and a white O, and on the right side it has a white H, a purple H, and a white O. So we kind of can see where this is going with the purple H on the sulfuric acid. And so the arrow should look like this, right? It's going to start with the tail going from the oxygen right to that hydrogen. And this bond's going to break and it's going to go right onto that oxygen. And so remember, there's two electrons in this bond, and so two electrons right there uh, go to that oxygen. And so the electrons from here that I'm just going to label red, right, are now going to be a part of this bond. All right, so that was just a quick little um, refresher on very, something very similar to what we did last time. So now we're going to get into some more stuff. All right, and so beyond this point, I'm not going to label the hydrogens or color code anything because, again, you won't be seeing that on tests. Um, so for the first example, number two, we have this nitrogen with a lone pair and two hydrogens and an ethyl group. An ethyl group is just two carbons. You will p learn that when you guys learn nomenclature, and of course, I'll make a video on that as well. And what we have over here is uh, two sorry, three carbons, a double bonded oxygen with a lone pair and a hydrogen. That oxygen has a plus charge. So if we look at the reactants and we look at the products, nitrogen is going to have one extra hydrogen and it's going to end up getting a plus charge. The oxygen in the end loses a hydrogen and gains a lone pair. So how can we show this with the curved arrows? Well, all you got to do is just look at how the reactants start off and look at the products. The nitrogen is going to gain an extra hydrogen and that oxygen loses one, right? And so we can kind of figure it out that this lone pair over here is going to reach out and it's going to grab that hydrogen and the bond over here that composes that oxygen-hydrogen bond is going to break and it's going to go onto that oxygen to form that second lone pair. And if you guys remember the formal charge equation, you'd know that the nitrogen, which has normally valence electrons of 5, is going to get a plus charge when it takes on that extra hydrogen because now it has 4 bonds and no lone pairs. And so that's going to give it a uh, formal charge of plus 1. All right, and so now let's go to this third example. So here we have something, again, very similar, exact same problem we had from the first video, but now I just didn't label anything. So what we have on the left is a hy uh, hydronium cation, H3O+, and it's an acid with a hydroxide anion, which is a base. And over here we have two water molecules. All right. 
and so the hydroxide anion started out, sorry, sorry hydro, um, the hydronium cation had three hydrogens, and that oxygen had a foam pair and a plus charge, and now it's going to end up losing one of the hydrogens, and the bond between that oxygen and hydrogen is going to bring return back to the oxygen in the form of a lone pair. And so how does that look? So in this case, we can pick any hydrogen. doesn't really matter. I'm just going to pick this one right here, that bond with that hydrogen. And we're going to take the two electrons here. Remember, there's two electrons in that bond. They're the ones that are going to break. And one of the lone pairs in this hydroxide anion is going to reach out, attack that hydrogen, and this bond is going to break and go onto that oxygen. And then we get two water molecules, and so I'll just color code them. So this would be our new bond that we formed, and the electrons that return to that hydrox uh, hydronium cation would be one of these over here. All right, and that red hydrogen would be right here. So now we're going to go to a different type of example. Now I'm going to give you the curved arrows and you're going to have to draw the products. Now this is pretty common for the exam one and uh, beyond. So you should get comfortable doing both sorts of problems. And generally I think people find this one the easier. The only thing you guys need to watch out for is formal charge because that trips people up. So what do we have here? We have, again, hydroxide anion, which is a base. And over here, we have this weird-looking group with two ketones. And it's looking like this hydroxide anion is attacking that hydrogen. And the electrons in that hydrogen carbon bond are returning to that carbon. All right. So again, the easiest way of starting one of these is probably just drawing what you know stays the same. So there's four, uh, five, five carbons, sorry, that stays the same. The two double bonded oxygens aren't touched by the arrow, so they stay the same. And then we also had that hydroxide anion, and so we can draw in what we know stays the same for that too. So now let's look at what changed. So we know that the hydroxide anion reached out using a pair of a lone, a lone pair to grab a proton, right? So let's check these two electrons went over here and attack that hydrogen. So we can show that it forms a new bond over there, right? And it now is a neutral water molecule. It lost that negative charge and the, because it used them to form this two electron bond. And so now, these two electrons in this carbon-hydrogen bond, they returned directly to that carbon. So this carbon now is a lone pair, right? And so now we have to calculate the formal charge. Now, the only reason I didn't calculate the formal charge for here is because you guys saw water a bunch of times. You probably already know it's neutral, all right? So carbon usually has a valence electrons, uh, normal valence electrons of four, how many bonds does this carbon have? Well, it's got one bond there to that carbon, a second bond there, and it's also got a third bond to a hydrogen that we don't show. All right, remember from the last video that we don't really ever show the hydrogens on carbon chains. All right, and so that's gonna total three bonds. And we also have two electrons from the lone pairs. So that's gonna be two. So that gives us a formal charge of negative one. And so this carbon over here with this lone pair has a negative charge on it. All right? And that's how you predict that product. Now let's go to the next example. And again, anytime, feel free to pause the video and you can try it out yourself. So here we have, again, a hydroxide anion, which is a base again. And we have HCl. Now you probably remember that. That's a pretty strong acid. All right. And it's a good thing to just analyze the reactions before you even do anything, even if it's just drawing the product given the arrows, because it helps you guys in the future when we're not specifying whether something's an acid or a base. Helps you build up, uh, kind of guess your 
intuition for these problems. All right, and so it shows that a lone pair from the hydroxide anion is reaching out for that to grab that proton, and a hydrogen chlorine bond is now being broken. So we can just mark them with those two electrons. And so let's draw what hasn't changed. We can draw the white hydrogen and oxygen with those two lone pairs. Plus, we know that chlorine is still there with three lone pairs, right? That's something that hasn't changed. And so now let's look at what has changed. We know that one lone pair of electrons reached out to form a bond with that white hydrogen. Okay, so now we have a water. And the chlorine, it had these two electrons return in the form of a lone pair right on it. All right, and so now we should calculate the formal charge. So if you look at the periodic table, chlorine usually has a valence electrons of seven. Now chlorine has zero bonds, but it has eight electrons in the form of lone pairs. So that's a negative one. So this chlorine has a negative one charge. All right, so now let's go on the next example, here we have, now this time we do not have a hydroxide anion, let's change it up a bit. This is a two carbon molecule with an oxygen attached to it, it's called an ethoxide, all right? It'll be a little bit easier to name these compounds later on when you get more familiar with them, but this is just known as an ethoxide and it's also a base, it's very similar to hydroxide. Uh, the hydroxide anion base. And over here, we have a ketone. All right, now this is not an acid base reaction. This is a little bit different. And so in this case, we have again a lone pair of electrons reaching out. And now instead of grabbing something, it's attacking something. All right, so th it's going, these two electrons are traveling up and they're going to attack that carbon. Okay, and that carbon is currently double bonded to an oxygen. Now remember, we can't have more than four bonds on a carbon. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to kick one of those double bonds up in the form of a lone pair on that oxygen in order to make sure that carbon has four bonds. That'll be gone over more in depth in the resonance video that should be coming up next. Uh, and so it'll be more clear if you guys don't understand that from a lecture. So let's try to predict what happened here. So again, easiest to draw, but you know it didn't change. We have this oxygen, the two carbons there. And remember, there's always hydrogens on those carbons. And we had two lone pairs. And that, oh, my bad for that one. I am thinking this is an acid base. Sorry about that, guys. Just putting an oxygen there. Right, and so one of those lone pairs reached out and attacked that carbon, so we can draw a bond to that carbon. Right, there's those two electrons there. And one of those bonds in this right here, this carbon-oxygen double bond, stayed the same. We didn't touch it, so we can still draw one bond there. All right, and we still have that oxygen, and we still have those original two lone pairs. But now what we did is we removed one of those double bonds and brought it up in the form of a lone pair onto that oxygen. So now we have to draw that. So actually I'm just going to color it purple for you guys. And so now we have a lone pair up there. Okay, so we should calculate formal charge for both oxygens. So I'm going to just label this oxygen 1, this oxygen 2. And we should do it for this carbon, so let's just do carbon 3. So formal charge of oxygen 1. Oxygen usually has a valence electrons of 6. And how many bonds does it have? Well, it has one bond right there. That's 1. Plus 6 electrons from the lone pairs. That's going to be a negative 1. 
right? So we can put a negative of the charge there. And so what about oxygen 2? Well, again, oxygen is 6 valence electrons usually. How many bonds did it have? It's this one bond there, and now it's got this new red double bond. Uh, not double bond, sorry, red bond, single bond. So it's going to be 2 plus its lone pairs. Now, I didn't draw those in. It's just going to be, again, staying the same. So 4 uh, electrons from the lone pairs. It's just going to be 0, so it's going to be neutral. And now what about that carbon? Carbon has four valence electrons usually. That carbon has how many bonds? Well, let's look. It's got one bond, two, three, and now it's got this fourth bond. So that's going to be four bonds. And it has no lone pairs attached, so it's just zero there. And so that's also going to be neutral. And so just to clean this molecule up, I'm just going to draw it a little neater for you guys. Sorry, actually. Right, and we have this oxygen. And there you go. And I just rotated this a little bit. It's okay to rotate. Um, single bonds, nothing wrong with that. Alright, so that's just the last video about basic curved arrows. The next one will cover resonance structures. If you had any questions about this video, something didn't make sense, or maybe it went a little bit too fast, or something even with the problem sets, feel free to email me. It's on the Oscar Review homepage, or obviously ask any TAs. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.